Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey Tea Sippers, welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl Lovely Tea. And I got my girl Lady J in the house. Lady J, say what's up to the people. Hey everybody, how you guys doing? Hey Tea, it's been a minute. It has been. I feel like since I've been out of town for so long, I've literally like the past week I've been resting and I've just been trying to catch up on all of this news. Mm -hmm. It is a lot going on globally. It is insane what is going on globally. And that's why we're here to do this podcast, to get everyone up to date, because a lot of things that are happening overseas are definitely going to affect us here in America. As always. Exactly. Now, one of the biggest news stories that just broke, like not even two days ago, was the assassination of Prime Minister uh, Shenzo Abba. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about him and just... You know, me and you had our own little conversation and we have our own little conspiracies on, you know, how this whole assassination came to be. But can you talk about the the role that he played in Asian politics, especially with China, Taiwan, America, Russia, all of that stuff? Well, absolutely. I'll tell you for me personally, when I was actually up really late working and I had saw the video of him being shot. Um, anybody, um, anybody who's been to Asia, Asia, specifically Japan, would be just shocked by the fact that he got shot. And yeah, because there's no gun violence, violence there. Yeah, yeah like, like that, that was the thing that caught me first. Like, what? Like, that part, okay? Um, and then after, this is just my personal opinion, the first, the first thing I thought was the Chinese. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. And I'll explain why. I mean, there's so many potential players here. This is an international figure. Shinzo Abe would be described as centrist left or, you know, close, like center left, right, you know, and more kind of nationalistic, comes from a family who I think his grandfather and his brother were prime ministers before. So, like, he comes from a family of, like, this... I don't want to say it was, it's like the Kennedys, but like into the Kennedys, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and his position was that uh, Japan should be a stronger entity to ward off China. Um, and Shinzo Abe had just left his station as prime minister just a few years ago because he was having some like health issues. And that was shocking. So I was shocked to hear that he was running again because the elections were just yesterday. And I was like, wow, he's running again? Of course he's going to win because he's very popular. He comes from like this dynasty, okay? Mm-hmm. So the fact that he was shot, to me, the first thing that I said to myself is like, who benefits shooting Senzo Abe right now with what all is going on? And that's something that we can go a little bit further into because the implications are just so wide-reaching it's it's the fact that they assassinated this man, or and I'm gonna say that because I don't believe it was just this one entity, or some guy that's from their own military forces that's apparently disgruntled. Perfect setup. Yeah, he's a perfect patsy. Yes, exactly a patsy. That's exactly what he is. So you know, with that being said, for him to be shot in Nara, you know. Uh, Japan is a relatively safe place. You right. know, you have your issues. But a political assassination in 2022 out in the open like that, I'm sorry. I don't believe this was a lone, quote, lone wolf situation. And I, it's sad that I just can't sit here and say, oh, it's a lone wolf because everything I've been fed, I have to challenge it because I don't believe nothing. Well, one of the things I noticed when, you know, looking up a lot of info on Shenzo Abe, mm-hmm. if you go onto Chinese Internet, we talk about all the time Weibo. Well, they're basically on Weibo celebrating. 
Oh, of course the, the people are. are not necessarily the government because you know they're gonna play their position but a lot of people are on, are on chinese social media celebrating this and as global leaders have expressed their grief and shock on chinese social media the celebrations of the ex-prime minister's death many chinese social media accounts reportedly celebrated his death an australia-based china activist has identified these accounts which are uh, making comments saying that it's good that Mr. Abe died, including I'm so happy, great news and party time. This was, these posts were reshared many times and what's uh, interesting is that China's President Xi has made no formal statement yet on the death of Mr. Abe, though the Chinese Foreign Office has expressed shock, but there's been no statement yet from President Xi. We so, you know, at this point, I do have to give the Chinese the side eye because this man was the main protector of Taiwan. And we all yeah. know China has been wanting to invade Taiwan, and I think it may happen. Because what they've been doing for the past few months is sitting back, sipping tea, and watching their bestie, Russia, slowly just take over Ukraine. And I think that's what they're yeah. gearing to do. And what better way to now have more access into Taiwan than by getting rid of the prime minister of Japan? Well, a strong one, because there is already a current prime minister there, and I think there were two since he left. Mm -hmm. Because one served out the rest of his term and then I think another one was elected and I could be wrong with that. But the thing is that Shinzo Abe represented a strong unifying force in this Asian Western conglomerate. And you can actually take it back. You know, I do love history. You can take it back to something very similar. The enemy of the enemy is my friend of the situation you had to deal with the Axis powers during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Shinzo Abe is so popular is because he was able to bring together the Koreans, the, the Americans, the, uh, ja the Japanese, uh, and other Western powers like Germany, Italy, France, and the UK, because he understood that an enemy of an enemy is my friend. You know, and the Japanese just, this year decided to tell Russia, no, these particular islands that were really further up in Japan, past Sakato, near the Chinese, Russian, Japanese border. The Russians claimed it as theirs when they went to fight in Ukraine. And then the Japanese came around and said no. And for the fact that Shinzo Abe was running and for him to be a strong leader right now, to me, that was an indication of the powers getting together and kind of getting their footing together because we finna rumble. The fact that yeah. they took him out. Yeah, this is going to have right. big, big political implications globally. Um, it's going to, you know, even though, again, it happened to Japan, this is, you know, causing a global ripple. We've heard Joe Biden speak on him. Trump was sending his condolences. So this this man was a key player in all of this. And right now, America is very nervous because they've never totally said that they would, you know, um, go to war if Taiwan is invaded. But now we may be forced to with Shenzo Abe's assassination. The shocking assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is an ominous sign that things are about to break. Really, things are about to break with the U.S.-led world order. Uh, because, you see, you see, Abe, in recent weeks and months, uh, as he's been plotting a, a major political comeback, he's, his main calling card has been that, uh, that he will rally the United States and Japan to come to defend Taiwan against China. And yes, this was, this was pretty much uh, his, uh, his signature issue uh, as, he plotted a, as he plotted to come back uh, into Japanese politics, uh, despite a very a very humiliating, uh, in, in some ways, uh, resignation, uh, not unlike Boris Johnson's res resignation uh, back in 2020. So, so yeah, what does what does this indicate to us? Uh, if uh, if you believe in karma and if you believe that things don't happen by accident, uh, this is what I think uh, his death, uh, Mr. Abe's death, signifies, and that is that. Uh, 
the more the, the more the U.S. and its allies try to like try to really nose try to shove their noses in China's business and try to boss China around, the the more the more backlash uh, they're gonna uh, they're gonna get at home, and the more things the more their own citizens are gonna blow up on their own leaders at home. Uh, this we saw this already happen with Trump back in 2020, uh, culminating in the events of January 6th, of course. Uh, now, now um, Trump's great Trump's buddy in Japan, Mr. Abe, unfortunately, uh, he's been killed uh, by by a disgruntled Japanese Japanese Navy veteran, probably over probably over economic or even pension issues. And so, yeah, like I, of course, all predictions, all pre- all predictions and forecasts of of black swan events like this are uh, are hazardous, but. But you can hardly miss you can har- hardly miss the political symbolism at this moment in history, especially in the history of the Asia Pacific. Uh, this, the rise of China and China's replacement of the United States in, in, as the top power in Asia, it will not be peaceful. There will be victims. Shinzo Abe has now become one of them, primarily because he stuck his neck out for Taiwan, and this is what he got. It's it's and, and when we were talking. Earl, we had talked a little bit about this earlier, but I had said to you, well, actually, I left you a message. Mm -hmm. And I had said to you, I think I said something like, I don't want to say Shinzo Abe's assassination is likened to the Archduke. Last name is Principe, shot the Archduke uh, Ferdinand, Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Sophie, and it started the, the First World War. But they was already there was already conflicts in other parts of the world that was the partition in Africa had happened. The Asians and the Japanese, the Japanese were already fighting the Russians. All of the, the same stuff that's going on right now was at play in the late 1800s after the post-industrial revolution and the beginning to the drop of World War One with a pandemic in tow. And right after that, the Great Depression. And then what happened after that? 1933 world war ii so like you know we have a tendency to repeat things and that's when i saw this i was like oh god Mm -hmm. (laughs) and all these other prime ministers who are dropping off the face of the earth did you hear you know what i'm saying like we can keep going down a list if you like because i mean even in london you know in in britain we have boris he just resigned he should have left yeah but the thing that was very interesting about him finally resigning is I remember like a day or two before he officially resigned, Boris Johnson, mm-hmm. literally so many people in the cabinet were like, we can't take this anymore. I quit. He knew the accused minister had previously committed predatory behavior, but he promoted him to a position of power anyway. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, that individual, the uh, old member for Tamworth, no longer has the Conservative whip. He no longer has a, a job. He, he is no longer, as soon as I was aware, made aware of the, the allegation that he has just read out, uh, Mr. Speaker, and the complaint that was made, uh, he, lost, uh, his, um, he lost his status as a Conservative MP. Anyone quitting now after defending all that hasn't got a shred of integrity. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, isn't this the first recorded case of the sinking ships fleeing the rats? This is what the end of the road looks like for Boris Johnson. The British Prime Minister says he's stepping down after a string of salacious scandals and a wide-scale rebellion within his own government. His announcement caps off an astonishing fall from grace for a politician who once looked poised to dominate British politics on the right for years to come. Today, Prime Minister Johnson delivered a brief resignation speech outside Number 10 Downing Street, thanked his supporters, refused to apologize for the scandals that brought him down. But he acknowledged that he couldn't carry on as Prime Minister. I know that there will be many people who are relieved and uh, perhaps quite a few who will also be disappointed. And I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. But them's the breaks. Even if things can sometimes seem dark now, our future together is golden. Thank you all very much. And with that, the Johnson era nears a close after three tumultuous years in power. As his remaining supporters applauded him, 
a large crowd gathered outside number 10 to boo the prime minister. Johnson knew the writing was on the wall. He had to. According to Bloomberg, he joked to his staff that he acted like a Japanese soldier fighting in the woods after the end of World War II by trying to cling to power last night before realizing this morning he had to go. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and again, some people will argue that because Boris would be considered a conservative, very Trumpian like. Um, and a lot of people ask the question, is Boris Johnson's departure a sign of the short lived neoconservative? Absolutely not. But one people would say that, oh, he's a Tory. He was very liberal leaning as a conservative. But that's really not it. He has so many scandals. And this last scandal with him hiring on an MP who had a known sexual assault allegation against him in recent memory. It was the it was it was the chum in the water, as they say, when, you know, sharks circle, there's blood in the water and then you throw chum in and they lose their mind. That's what happened with Boris. That's what happened with Boris. And it was well deserved. <laughs> yeah, I think well people deserved. were definitely tied to him. But again, with him stepping down, half of the cabinet also stepping down. Mm -hmm. Where is this going to lead the UK? Because if you guys don't know right now, the UK economy they are facing the worst inflation and the fastest rising of inflation that they've ever faced in 40 years. The price of food in the UK has jumped up significantly. Um, the, the train conductors and I think teachers, there's several major companies and workers that are on strike. Not deterred by an overcast London, thousands of people travelled across the country to be here. I've travelled up from Plymouth. I've just travelled from Sheffield. I've travelled up from Bromley. I've come from Abergavenny, in South Wales. It's about a four hour journey. Protesting against the inaction they see in tackling the cost of living crisis. Crowds dotted with placards warning of soaring inflation and a squeeze on earnings. They march down Whitehall with a brief pause outside Downing Street. Last month's package of support announced for the Chancellor, estimated £21 billion, in this crowd at odds with stagnant wages for public sector workers. I'm a nurse in the health service. Colleagues are leaving because they can't afford to, to work. Their bills are going up, they're having to pay for parking in hospitals again, and our pay is just not enough. We had a real feeling that after the pandemic, things were going to get better, that we were going to be recognised, we were going to get paid properly, and it's just really taking the soul out of everyone that actually that's not going to happen and we're going to get told yet again pay rises for others but not for public sector workers that discontent may linger three 24-hour nationwide train strikes start tuesday and will disrupt travel network rail says for the entire week we bargained demanded we paid day two of the most significant rail strike to hit the uk in decades Cleaners, station staff and other workers arrived at the picket line early on Thursday morning as railways were paralyzed for the second time this week across the country. On Tuesday, a first day of industrial action left millions of commuters in a lurch. It's absolutely awful, man, absolutely awful. I mean, normally my, my route is about, about 30 minutes. It's been extended to about a one hour, 15 minutes. The strike's really not helping anyone, if you ask me. I must say this, I had quite, as I said, I had quite a pleasant journey in this morning because my train was deserted and the route was much shorter. But I generally feel like it's probably right that they are striking because with everything going up and people not being paid enough, I understand. Tens of thousands of railway workers are protesting pay and working conditions amid soaring inflation, which has hit a 40-year high and is expected to keep rising. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has criticised the strikes. I want to emphasise to everybody this morning why I think those strikes are so wrong, so wrong and so unnecessary. Don't forget, throughout the pandemic, uh, the UK government supported the railway industry to the tune of £16 billion. His government is attempting to push through legislation that would allow it to plug staffing gaps during industrial action. 
Workers at London's Heathrow Airport have voted to strike over pay as surging inflation erodes salaries and sparks growing industrial unrest. Almost 700 workers are set to strike during the British summer holidays when the demand from travellers would be expected to be at its peak. British Airways says it's offered a 10% one-off payment which was accepted by the majority of staff. Unions say they agreed to a 10% pay cut last year when the British Airways and the industry was suffering vast losses due to the pandemic and the airline slashed thousands of jobs. They now want a permanent salary uplift rather than a one-off payment. So increasing pay might help. The problem is, of course, that airlines and airports alike uh, have found themselves in, in two years of losses and don't have that much financial muscle at the moment either to simply increase um, increase pay across the board. Um, so that that is a real issue. The, the industry needs to make it more attractive for people to work uh, at, at airports. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.